Hey there, welcome to the 19th installment in this daily series called 30 Ways to Become an Empowered Artist. I'm Bob Baker, just thanking you once again for tuning in. Have you been enjoying this series? I hope so. Is this maybe your first one that you just happened to stumble upon? Well, if so, there are 18 more before this. So there's two things I encourage you to do right now. One is to share this video or any of the videos in the series or the audio podcast with your friends, with creative people in your life who really need to hear these messages. You can do that by email, by posting them on Twitter and Facebook and wherever you're hanging out online. Maybe there's a share button somewhere on this page. Just don't keep it to yourself. Spread it around. Another way to show your appreciation for all of these free lessons, which will end up totaling about three and a half hours worth of material when all is said and done, is to click the link somewhere below the video or somewhere on this page where you can learn more about the Empowered Artist campaign, the mission, the movement that I am on to inspire and empower creative people around the world. I would really appreciate your help. So please, either now pause the video or the tape, or at the end of it, go to the link and check it out. Because there are many ways for you to support this effort, and I'm gonna need the help of a lot of people to make this stuff happen. All right, today I wanna to continue the conversation about communication and marketing and talk about a way that you can describe what it is that you do in a way that's gonna to lead to more sales and more prosperity. Wouldn't you like a little bit more of that? So quite often when people go to market something new for the first time, especially if they're new to the whole self-promotion and sales thing, they start talking about it in a particular way that is not very effective. So let me give you a couple of examples here. Let's use the example of an artist having like an opening or some kind of an art show. And if you're watching the video, yes, those are my paintings on the wall behind me. If you're listening to the audio podcast version, when you have a chance, go to poprockartstudio.com. You can check out some of my visual art there. But quite often, a visual artist might promote an opening along the lines of, Hey, I'm having an art show at the XYZ Gallery. I'm really thrilled. It's the first time I've been in such a high-profile space. And I'm really looking forward to this event. Will you come and support me? I'm so excited. I would really love to pack the place and impress the venue people there. Okay, so that's a typical way that someone might promote an art opening. There's nothing wrong with that. They're demonstrating their excitement. They're doing the best that they can. But the problem with that is it's all focused on the artist. All those I statements and me and mine, it's totally focused on them. The key to communicating your products, your services, your events is to speak to the person who's reading it or consuming that piece of marketing material. It has to focus on their interests and what they get out of it. So I had an art show opening of my own recently, and when I created the Facebook page for it, my description read something like this. Hey, I'm throwing an art party and you're invited. Start your Saturday, whatever the date is, off right with cool people, great food, an awesome environment, and a ton of fun. And the whole thing is over by 8 p.m., so even if you still have plans later in the night, you can still do both things. Now what was different about that approach compared to the first one? It spoke a lot more to the potential attendee, what they were going to get out of it, the experience they were going to have while they were there. Even address some objections that they might have, like, well, I already got plans that night. Well, this is early, so you can still do something later. There was a lot of you statements and far, far fewer I statements. Yes, I made them aware that it was an art show that I was having, but other than that, I focused on what was in it for them. And that's what I highly encourage you to do whenever you're promoting something. Another way to look back at this is to go back to your English composition classes and think in terms of speaking in first person, second person, or third person. So first person is I statements. I did this, I did that. Second person is you statements, speaking to the reader. You really need to hear this. You might feel this way. And then third person is more of a distant observer. You know, they went down to the, he walked into the bar. And so in general, when describing something, whether that's a book, uh, a music album, a performance, try to avoid too many I statements. Like, I'm really excited about this. This is my first this, this, I, me, mine, blah, blah, blah. Because it's all about you and they lose interest. Also avoid the third person. Readers of this book will feel, or listeners will be highly engaged with the new album. No, you want to use second person you statements as often as possible. 
So when promoting, for instance, let's say a new music album, you would avoid a bunch of I statements like I'm really thrilled about this new album. You want to also avoid a long list of dry features like 12 tracks. We use such and such well-known producer, 75 minutes in length. Those are all features. But what's in it for the listener? So to use more you statements, you might describe it like, hey, if you like to dance and party your brains out and forget about your hectic work week, this CD is the solution. On it, you'll find this, that, and the other thing. So you always lead with what's in it for the person. Follow up with this is the solution, the book, the album, the product, the service, the event. But transform as many of your sentences as possible into you statements. And avoid overly talking about yourself. Also avoid the distant third person. Attendees will get a workbook and three hours worth of presentations. <laughs> Where's the smelling salts? So whenever you sit down to write something, whether it's a quick email, a Facebook event page, a flyer, always ask yourself, how can I communicate this in a way that clearly spells out what's in it for the person I'm sending this to? How do they benefit? How can I use two or three times as many you statements as I statements? This is a learned skill. You have to practice it. You just don't learn this overnight. I've been writing this stuff for like 25 years. So it comes more naturally to me. But the more you practice it, the better you'll get at it too. And when you do this over time, you'll find out that more people are responding to your sales offers. More people are paying for stuff. They're sending you money because you describe it in a way that was meaningful to them. So I hope this helped, and if it did, as I mentioned before, please share this video, this audio podcast, this link with people who could really stand to hear it. And if you want to show your appreciation for all this free content that I'm dishing out 30 days in a row, click the link to the Artist Empowerment Movement and Fan Funding Campaign. Yes, it's a new book that I'm planning to publish soon, but it's much more than that. And I would love for you to get involved. There are many ways to do so. So click the link to find out more and leave a comment here on the page. If you'd like to share your thoughts, I'd appreciate that too. That's it for this segment. I'll be back tomorrow with another one. So this is Bob Baker saying so long for now.